Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? So we got word over the weekend that the New Orleans Saints were bringing uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling, the wide receiver, in for a workout. And uh, just within the last 15 minutes or so, we've now gotten word that the Saints have agreed to terms with Marquez Valdez Scantling. Jeremy Fowler over at ESPN is the first that I saw had it. Others might have, but this is the first one I saw. Veteran wide receiver Marquez Valdez Scantling agrees to term with the Saints. Got his physical with the team this morning. Hopes to get started on the game plan soon. So it's a... um, this is a – it's an obvious need for New Orleans. They were going to have to go uh, add a a veteran wide receiver because of Rashid Shahid being done for the year. Even with Chris Olave coming back off the protocol, which we all hope is this week and that he'll be ready to go, um, you can't go through the remainder of the season with Chris Olave and then your number two being either Mason, Tipton, or Bub Means. You've got to find somebody. And I'll tell you, the the thing that I like a lot about Marcos Valdez-Scantling is, yes, he's a veteran receiver. He, he's 30 years old, so he's been around the league a little bit. But um, he played for, for Green Bay, so he played with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. Uh, his best season was back in the COVID year. He, he averaged 20.1 yards per reception. I'm sorry, uh, 20.9, nearly 21 yards per reception. Uh, and he had 690 receiving yards. So he's not a guy that you're going to look at and say, oh, he's a, he's a one. But he also spent the last two years, 2022, 2023, with Kansas City Chiefs. And that, of course, means he spent the last year on the, the last two Super Bowl winning teams. And one of the biggest things that I think the Saints have a problem with right now is a lack of winning culture. Let, let me be let me just clarify. <clears throat> there are some veteran players in this team that were part of good Saints teams. Cameron Jordan, Alvin Kamara, Demario Davis. These were guys that were on a team that played that hosted an NFC championship game in 2018. But this is a roster now that you're going on four years not making the playoffs. Overwhelmingly, these players do not know what it's like to be a contender. Anytime you can infuse a veteran that has won on a roster, I'm very much in favor of that. And that's what Marquez Valdez-Scantling can bring. I, I'm not expecting him <clears throat> to show up and go challenge to be your, your number one. Look, he spent this season in Buffalo where he played six games, had just two receptions on nine targets and, uh, and no touchdowns. So not very impactful. But the two years prior, look at his at his numbers in Kansas City. In 2022, he had 42 catches for 687 and two touchdowns. That was his second best season ever. Last year in Kansas City, a 21 receptions for 315 and one score. So his productivity dropped a season ago. But he's not that far removed from being a player that could be a competent, if not impactful, wide receiver. And because he's a veteran, you would also anticipate that he would be able to s- seamlessly um, assemble and assimilate into this offense. Now, Dennis Allen met with reporters on Monday. Again, this was before the news broke that they were signing uh, Marcos Valdez-Scantling. But this was first just about how the visit went. Uh, have you all already had the visit with uh, Marcos Valdez-Scantling? Or at least there was a, a visit he's, that was. He's here right now. He's here. Yeah. Uh, what was it that stood out to you about him? I had a good workout this morning. I mean, he ran around pretty good. I'm going to visit with him here in just a minute as soon as we get done. So, um, but yeah, I think um, I think so far it's been a good visit. They followed up and asked why it would be a good fit with with MVS. He's played in our league. Um, you know, he's he's a bigger receiver, got a good speed element to him. Um, I think he's somebody that you know can fit some of the things that we. You know, might be needing, uh, you know, in particular with the loss of Shahid, you know, another speed element, I think, is something that we would consider. Um, the other thing that's maybe most important there to remember is he's free. And what I mean by free, obviously, you're going to pay him. 
veteran minimum or whatever the contract may be, but you signed him off the street. It would be um, it'd be very different if you had to tr- if you were trading for a receiver right now. That's that's the difficult part. Where if you were looking at a player that were on another team that were available before the trade deadline and you went and gave up an asset for a player. The only way that I think the Saints at this point should be uh, buyers instead of sellers would be if they felt like they were contenders. Now, if the Saints go win in L.A. and then go win in Carolina and then you wake up in two weeks and you're four and five, then you know, two days before the trade deadline, and then you got a game against Atlanta to get to 500 and potentially pull them even with you. Then I could see saying, okay, we're back in it. If in two weeks it looks like that. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case. That's my opinion. And I think many of you share that opinion. But right now, if you can improve your roster and add a veteran player who's won two Super Bowls, who's got winning culture in his background, and you can bring him into a young, inexperienced receiver group where Chris Olave is your number one, but still hasn't been on a team that's made the playoffs. And then after that, you're talking about rookies and Bub Means and Mason Tipton. Respect to Cedric Wilson. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm for it. This checks a lot of boxes for, for what you need. And you are going to get Derek Carr back. Listen, my biggest complaint with the Saints over this losing streak is not the offense. When this offense was healthy, they were good. Um, I, I don't want to sit here and say that injuries are the only thing to blame. But you, I don't know that any team could lose their quarterback, whatever they call their version of Taysom Hill, three interior linemen, your number two receiver. Like, I don't know what team could withstand that offensively and just seamlessly move along. It's just not realistic. My bigger problem is with is with the defense and how they get that back to some semblance of respectability. But offensively, you're going to get healthy. Like, you're going to get Eric McCoy back. You're going to get Cesar Ruiz back. You're going to get Taysom Hill back. Alave could be back this week. You're going to get Derek Carr back. Your offense is going to get healthy again. And so we'll have an idea of what this offense looks like when it's healthy. But what you're not getting back is Rashid Shaheed. And it's unfair to expect the offense to be productive without a complement of of legitimate NFL starters. I'm not telling you Marquez Valdez-Scantling is a legit number two in the NFL right now. I think those days are beyond him. But on this team, even at this point in his career at 30 years old, he's a better option as the number two than anybody else you have after Alave. So I do like this for a lot of reasons. It's affordable. It doesn't cost you an asset to go sign him. He's got championship culture and experience. He's a better player than you have. And it's going to give you a better look also at Spencer Rattler this week. And it's going to give Derek Carr and the offense a better sense of what their their ceiling can be and their their ability is when you look more like an NFL offense instead of an NFL preseason offense. So Saints sign Marquez Valdez-Scantling. I like it. Now they got to get healthy offensively. And maybe more importantly... They got to show a little pride defensively. Yet two, yet ten days to prepare for this game out against the Chargers. See if you can go give a better performance than you have over the last month. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.